When these locomotives emerged onto the Midland region way back in 1959, the route they were allocated to was in shambles. However, despite working through the darkest period of the Midland Main Line's history, and with the shadow of closure looming overhead, the Class 44, 45 and 46 peak locomotives helped to keep this forgotten part of the British Railway network afloat for nearly 30 years, saving a vital connection between Central England and London. The Midland Main Line, of the four primary routes heading north out of London, has often been seen as the seldom remembered secondary intercity route. While the West Coast and East Coast main lines prided themselves on their speed and luxurious express trains, and the Chiltern main line formed part of the venerable Great Western Railway, the Midland was a comparatively slow and quiet railway that winded its way through to Leicester, Derby, Nottingham, Sheffield and Leeds. In 1948, the former operator of the Midland and West Coast main lines, the London Midland and Scottish Railway, or LMS, was nationalised by the Attlee government to form the Midland region of British Railways. At the time, while the LMS's premier fleet of Stania locomotives were the core of West Coast services out of London, trains from the magnificent London St Pancras station on the Midland Main Line were hauled by a motley crew of secondary passenger and mixed traffic engines, including Fowler Class 4P, LMS Ivert Class 4, and LMS Stania Class 5 460s. The comparatively light traffic on the Midland Main Line, though, did allow for testing of Britain's first ever mainline diesel engines upon its rails, the two LMS prototypes 10,000 and 10,001. 10,000 and 10,001 were part of the LMS's innovative attempts to introduce diesel and electric traction on its mainline and suburban network, and were powered by 1600 horsepower English Electric 12 SVT diesel electric engines that pushed the pair to a top speed of 93 miles an hour. This was, at the time, a spectacular feat, but sadly the LMS wouldn't be able to take credit for the later success of these engines, as, when released from the Derby Works in December 1947, nationalisation was only three weeks away. Upon the formation of British Railways, the two engines were reclassified as British Rail Class D161, and, following initial testing, 10,000 began working express trains between London St Pancras and Derby from February 1948 while 10,001 started work on the Derby to Manchester Central services. The pair's use on the Midland Main Line was unfortunately short-lived, as in late 1948, both engines were withdrawn for modifications, before being transferred away in June 1949 to the West Coast to operate services between London, Euston and Glasgow. Regardless, these two prototypical designs had proven that diesel traction on both the Midland and the Main Line was a viable concept for intercity trains, and would go on to form the basis of future British Railways policy in the following decade. In 1955, British Railways drafted the Modernisation Plan, a radical development scheme which would see the replacement of thousands of steam engines with a slew of brand new diesel and electric locomotives, combined with a rolling electrification scheme on a majority of Britain's main lines. However, the plan, despite being a unified effort by British Railways to introduce locomotives that were, ostensibly, available for use on all regions, ended with most of the classes built being dictated by the requirements or demands of individual regions, a contributing factor as to why there were so many classes of locomotive built. For instance, the Western region, which stubbornly considered itself a continuation of the famous Great Western Railway, adopted a policy of diesel hydraulic transmission only, resulting in the famous Class 35 Hymex, Class 42 Warships and Class 52 Westerns. While the aforementioned diesel hydraulic transmission provided lighter and faster locomotives, as opposed to the comparatively lumbering diesel electric traction, it was generally the policy of British Rail to consider diesel electric due to it being cheaper and less cumbersome to operate. As such, the tender was put out to BR's Derby Works to draw up plans for a prospective locomotive, their experience with the two LMS prototypes of the 1940s having put them on an even keel. For power, British Rail turned to Swiss engine manufacturer Solzer to develop the locomotive's prime mover. At the time, 
Souls's frontline locomotive engine design was the LDA series, which began production way back in around 1938. After successful use in the French SNCF class CC 65500 and the Romanian Railway CFR class 60, the LDA series, which consisted of a single bank 8-cylinder engine, was deemed suitable for the task. Initially, the Sulza LDA-31 engines used by the SNCF and Romanian locomotives were found to be too large to fit inside a British locomotive due to the restrictive loading gauge of the UK network. Therefore, Sulza developed a scaled-down variant dubbed the LDA-28. However, despite reductions in size, the engine was still comparatively large, especially when coupled with the Crompton Parkinson GC426-A1 main generator. As a result of the power plant's weight, the body and chassis required significant framing and support, even before fitting the engine with auxiliary equipment, train heating boilers, water and fuel. Due to the tremendous load, eventually coming in at 135 tonnes, the original plan to have the locomotive be of a two-axle configuration was increased to four, giving the locomotive 16 wheels to carry its heavy internal workings. The significant weight of the locomotive was a somewhat crippling factor in the engine's route availability, therefore it could only be restricted to certain sections of the main line where track could suitably support the Titanic machine. Construction of the new Solza Type 4s began in 1958, and by early 1959 the first four locomotives were nearly completed. In the summer of that year, the pilot locomotive, D1, was noted as being under test around the Derby area but little is known about whether any initial teething issues needed to be addressed during this early stage. Eventually, the locomotive made its debut at Carlisle Station on July 14, 1959, being named Scaffold Pike, the highest mountain in England, by Sir Fergus Graham, Lord Lieutenant of Cumberland. The naming of these locomotives after mountains and peaks would be a theme of the class, hence these engines being affectionately dubbed the Peak Class. Latterly, the class would follow the tradition of naming locomotives after British Army regiments. After continued testing, D1 officially entered service on September 5, 1959, being allocated to Camden Motive Power Depot in North London. The initial class of Salsa Type 4s comprised of 10 locomotives, with D10 being delivered to Camden Shed on February 20, 1960. Operations for the Type 4s, later designated Class 44 under the TOPS system, saw them employed on top expresses along the Midland Main Line to Leicester, Derby, Nottingham and Sheffield. Of note was the early morning service from the former Midland Railway terminus at Manchester Central to London St Pancras, returning on a mid-afternoon train. This early morning train would later fall under the auspices of the venerable, though unsuccessful, Midland Pullman sets. As the Class 44s continued to gather a sturdy reputation for reliability and speed, far exceeding the steam locomotives that came before them, BR's Derby Works began development into the even more powerful Class 45s, which were to form the mainstream fleet of Midland Mainline diesel operations. To aid in the construction of the 127 locomotive order, BR's works at crew were also commissioned to deliver the fleet. The Class 45s were virtually identical to the Class 44s, but featured an increase in power output from the marine-type slow-revving Sulza 12 LDA 28B diesel engine. As opposed to the preceding Class 44, which provided 2,300 horsepower, the Class 45 was up to 2,500 horsepower. The result was a locomotive capable of reaching a top speed of 90 miles an hour, as opposed to the Class 44's 75 miles an hour, as well as featuring improved acceleration. The first Class 45's entered service on the Midland region in late 1960. On the Midland, these locomotives became the prime motive power for services out of London St Pancras, demoting steam on this route to either humdrum freight operations or the scrapyard. The final variant of peak locomotives followed in 1961, 
where the Derby Works took the Class 45 and went about fitting it with a variety of mechanical modifications. While the body shell and Sulzer engine are identical, the locomotive was fitted with an upgraded generator and traction motors developed by the Loughborough-based Brush Company, replacing the previous Crompton-Parkinson equipment fitted to the Class 45. Designated Class 46, this new class of locomotives and their revised mechanics differed very little from the preceding Class 45, being still rated at 2,500 horsepower and maintaining a top speed of 90 miles an hour. As such, the somewhat minor differences between the two classes meant that Class 46 production was curtailed at 56 locomotives, becoming the last of the peak classes to be built in 1963. With a fleet of 183 superior Class 45s and 46s now in service, the small company of 10 Class 44s quickly fell into the void of non-standard design. With more than enough of their brethren to cover their presence on passenger workings, the Class 44s began trials as freight locomotives from June 1960, with D8 being tested in conjunction with BR Standard 9F No. 92153 on coal trains out of Toton near Nottingham. In 1962, the class underwent major modifications to remove their steam heating boilers, and their engines were retrofitted with supercharged air coolers to bring their total power output to 2,500 horsepower. In May of the same year, the entire Class 44 fleet was allocated to Toton, and, in conjunction with five brand new Class 46s, took over on the Wichner to Washwood Heath freights. The Class 44s would spend the rest of their working lives at Toton, hauling coal trains, their range only dictated by the route knowledge of allocated drivers. As for Class 45s and 46s, these had become the powerhouses of the Midland region, as well as supplementing the Trans-Pennine Express services between Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, York and Hull. Of note during this period was the minor celebrity role of Class 45 D60 Lytham St Anne's, as it hauled the final through-passenger train on the famous Waverley route between Edinburgh and Carlisle via Hoyk. The class were also regular performers on the cross-country network between Leeds, Sheffield, Derby, Birmingham, Bristol, Exeter and Plymouth, working long-distance summertime express services to the resorts of Devon and Cornwall, and Class 45s and 46s could often be seen working trains along the seawall at Dawlish and Tynmouth on their way to Paynton, Plymouth, Newquay and Penzance. Back on the Midland Main Line itself, however, the situation was somewhat bleak, due largely to decades of neglect. Throughout the 1960s, plans had been drafted to close London St Pancras Station and transfer the few Midland Main Line passenger services to either King's Cross or Euston. If not for the outcry of famous poet Sir John Betjeman, and the huge public support he was able to garner for the station's continued use, the magnificent terminus would likely have been demolished by 1970. Sadly, while the station and route did get a reprieve, the Midland Main Line quickly became Britain's forgotten trunk railway. Though attempts were made to improve the speed of the East and West Coast Main Lines in the 1970s, the Midland was left to languish with a deteriorating network of points, signals and track work that dated back to the end of the Victorian era. The coaching stock was dirty and decrepit, while service patterns, aside from main expresses between London, Derby, Nottingham and Sheffield, were sporadic and unreliable. In July 1968, direct services between London and Manchester Central ceased when the through route was closed, leaving just the core services around the East Midlands and Derby Dales. During this period, while the Class 45s and 46s proved to be strong and dependable stalwarts on the few remaining passenger operations, their reduced service patterns meant that many were relegated to the bread and butter work of freight. Class 46s were especially prone to freight work, with a small fleet based in Cornwall for use on the China clay traffic around Lost with Eel and Par. Aside from their Midland engagements, the remainder of the class were stretched across the heart of England, from Gateshead in the northeast to Bristol and Plymouth in the southwest. However, the 1980s proved to be the beginning of the end for this sizable but seldom remembered fleet of locomotives. In November 1980, 
the last of the Class 44s were withdrawn after 21 years of service, having been replaced by a new fleet of Class 47s and 56s on their various freight duties. Of the 10 built, only two would survive into preservation. As for Class 45 and 46 operations, while several had been written off due to accident damage, a vast majority of Class 45s remained hard at work, but Class 46 operations were dwindling. The non-standard nature of this 56-strong fleet of Class 46 locomotives meant they were singled out for withdrawal early on. From 1980 to 1983, most of the class were retired, as the influx of more standard diesel locomotives, such as Class 47s, started making inroads into the fleet both on passenger and freight workings. In 1980 alone, 38 locomotives were withdrawn and scrapped. This would be compounded from May 1983, with the arrival of Class 43s and their Intercity 125 sets on services between London St Pancras and the East Midlands. While the HST's 125mph performance was largely curbed by the poor condition of the Midland Main Line's track work and signalling, the benefits of removing loco-hauled operation from top-line expresses was immediately apparent. The HSTs, by comparison, were smooth, fast, easier to operate and maintain, and far more reliable than the increasingly decrepit fleet of peak-class locomotives. 1984 saw the end of the Class 46, with the last seven members of the fleet meeting their end in November of that year. However, this wasn't before the spectacular demise of 46009 in July 1984, at the hands of the Central Electricity Generating Board, or CEGB. After its withdrawal in October 1983, having worked a career of 22 years on expresses out of London St Pancras, 46009 was handed over to the BR Research Department under number 97401 in November of that year. Allocated to Toton, the engine was sidelined for use in an upcoming crash test of the new Flatroll DB550019 nuclear flask. On July 17, 1984, the locomotive and three Mark I coaches was allowed to run away on the old Dolby test track, reaching a speed of 90 miles an hour as it hurtled uncontrollably through the Leicestershire countryside. Ahead of it, one of the Flatroll nuclear flasks had been positioned across the track the flask having been filled with water to replicate radioactive material. Nearing its top speed, the train rounded the curve at the site of the former Old Dalby train station and smacked head-on into the flask, causing the Class 46 to explode into a massive ball of flames and smoke. The impact utterly destroyed both the locomotive and coaches, but the flask, while dented and scorched, was otherwise undamaged, with no leaks reported although atomic energy critics disputed that the test was far too staged to truly simulate the effects of such a crash. 46009 was subsequently broken up on site. With the Class 45s now the sole remaining members of the peak classes left operating, these, surprisingly, continued to persevere throughout the decade. While HSTs had been introduced on the cross-country route in 1982, it wasn't uncommon to find peaks working the line on secondary expresses as late as 1988. The replacement of the locomotive's outdated steam heating boiler with electric train heating had helped these engines earn themselves a reprieve in a support role. On other secondary routes, TPE trains on the core route between Newcastle and Liverpool continued until 1987, after which the Class 47s dominated the loco-hauled operations on this line. In their final years, peaks saw increasing relegation to freight operations, with these locomotives frequently seen on intermodal and mixed traffic workings on the Midland and West Coast main lines. In the end, the axe had to fall when the last two Class 45s were withdrawn from use and scrapped, 45106 Vulcan and 45128 Centaur. 45106 was, in fact, the last Class 45 in operation in 1989, but caught fire on the 712 Derby to London St Pancras on February 3rd, 1989, bringing an end to the mighty peaks. Happily though, some of these locomotives would stay in scrapyards until as late as 1994, allowing a brief window of opportunity to preserve a few members of the fleet. In total, 
two Class 44s, 11 Class 45s and three Class 46s were saved for preservation. Of controversy though, is the 12th Class 45 that has survived into the 21st century, 45015. While this locomotive is preserved, it hasn't been restored, having been kept at Toten Depot as a spares donor from its withdrawal in 1986 until 1999. In 2002, it was taken to the battlefield line, with a view to restoring it, but as of May 2020, the locomotive still sits rotting in the same location it has for nearly 20 years at Shackerstone, and chances are this empty hulk will likely be sold for scrap. Overall, the Class 44, 45 and 46 peak locomotives are among the few modernization plan era diesel locomotives that proved to be fairly successful machines, helping to keep the decaying Midland Main Line alive for over 20 years before the influence of the HST came to reverse its fortunes. However, if not for the issue of weight, the class could have seen further distribution across the British Rail network. Nevertheless, the class proved, against all adversity, that they could easily and dutifully power express passenger and freight operations, truly cementing themselves as the workhorses of the Midland region. Thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, why not leave a like and be sure to subscribe for more great content. Thank you very much, take care and I'll see you next time.